Good afternoon. This is a meeting of the editorial team of the Transatlantic Dialogue Conference 2017. So these people have been working behind the scenes and very often also in front of this, uh, on, on, in, uh, at the scene uh, to kind of collect all the materials related to this conference. Uh, the first thing I would like to ask you, um, it wasn't actually you doing all the reporting and kind of follow-up of all these sessions. I heard that there were about 40 reporters recruited from among the students. How did you do that? <laughs> well, basically we wrote an email to many, many people asking them if they would be interested. And fortunately, we got a lot of feedback, actually, if I remember correctly. Mm -hmm. So. As you said, 40 journalists actually were willing to work for us, for all of us, for all the participants, basically, because they allow us to, after the end of the conference, they would send us their reports, their written, written texts, so that we can actually produce a brochure, something published, something printed, that we can hold in our hands, so that after the end of the conference, we still have something remaining. But fortunately, yes, as you said, we had many people that are willing or were willing to help us, and we are very happy that they, that they did. Mm -hmm. And did you recruit uh, among American and European students? Or were the, is, was it really a mixed group and, and uh, the same size, uh, roughly, or how, how was it done, the selection on the whole? Yeah, so on the American side, we, I reached out to some of the organizers of this conference and encouraged that some of the students that they were bringing with them from their programs to invite them to be on the editorial team so that we can get their perspectives since they were already going to be coming. Um, I've also reached out to students that I was bringing and encouraged my department to be involved and so okay. they were able to fund six students and another professional to come and be involved as well and I think Danny sent out an email to European students at University of Luxembourg and we also reached out to participants and just explained what the editorial team was and so I think the collaboration was is that we all used our networks and then provided a a good outline for them all to feel like they were prepared. So. Some, 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 of the some, of the, some of them were volunteers. Yes. Some of them are doing it for course credit. Mm. So for example, there's a course at the University of Luxembourg where the students were required to do this journalism. And the ger some German students, some of the German students are doing a course on tourism. Mm. And they, they, it's part of their course. Mm. You might know which of the course is at Luxembourg, Danny. Well, it's basically master students that were also willing. So the professor said, this is an excellent opportunity to also learn about writing about the process because that was our idea too. Mm -hmm. Not only coming to the conference, experiencing the conference, but for some students, this might be the first time they are involved in this process of also following rules mm -hmm. that we set because we yeah. told them, you first of all have to attend several meetings yeah. You have to read your emails okay. that we send you. You have to follow some instructions, mm -hmm. and that's part of a complete process. You have mm -hmm. to, you know, attend also a deadline where mm -hmm. you have to send us your texts. Mm -hmm. But the principal idea was why do we have so many journalists? Because that's also a new thing. We didn't have that in the previous mm -hmm. conferences. Because mm -hmm. we said this is the idea of the conference. So many people come here from different nationalities, from different parts of the world, and why shouldn't we reflect this? in our brochure. Yes. Mm -hmm. So every template that they use, because we set up one template, but we didn't tell them which style they should write in because we said, no, we want 40 different you know, perceptions, 40 different views of the, mm -hmm. of the respective text, so to mm -hmm. also reflect that in the brochure. Mm -hmm. It makes me very much think of one of the other items I jotted down, the idea of, of engagement. You, mm -hmm. So you, you really pulled in people to be engaged in the conference, but at the same time, I constantly got the impression, and I'm also speaking for myself, is that we and the students and the participants were kind of uh, uh, drawn into this whole e experience, and it was not just kind of listening in to what 
uh, cleverer and, and, and more eloquent uh, people were, were saying. Mm -hmm. um, how would you, how did you perceive that? Well, uh, the students, uh, I think they are, they, they have a, um, they, they don't know exactly uh, what, in what are they joining, but uh, when they, they, no, yes, when they, when they, uh, when they go to the, to the rooms and to the different panels, to, they participate uh, in the round tables. Mm -hmm. I think there is something that uh, uh, is uh, open uh, inside them, or they, they, they open, uh, also the, the professors, the experts. So there is a kind of connection that uh, I think it's only possible in, a, in an event like, like this. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Uh, I particularly uh, participate in, in one about uh, storytelling and, and it was very interesting because uh, uh, we talk about uh, how, how can, how can the, 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 the feeling of belonging to, to uh, a culture or a tradition uh, could be possible uh, with, with uh, the storytelling. And the perception of everybody was more or less the same because uh, we, we Okay, we, we come from different cultures, but uh, there is something in common that uh, emerged in, in, in this event. Yeah. Ashley, would you think that engagement and, and learning, that these are synonyms one of another, or are they complementary, rather? You know, I would say that engagement is, is necessary, and I would say it's an equation, because for me it's the engagement, the ability to do, the be present, but then the reflection, mm. which for us, we were asking for them to reflect in a, in a paper, an editor, you know, editorial paper, some format of just processing what that experience is like for you, mm -hmm. and then that will equal the learning, right? So many times we go places and we experience something, and then we walk away, and then we never take a minute to really think about what mm -hmm. that experience okay. is like mm -hmm. for us, mm -hmm. and that thinking is what presents the learning. So mm -hmm. an example is, you know, earlier we had a student that stepped up and said, you know, I went abroad and then I came back and I didn't learn anything and then I came here to this conference mm -hmm. and I feel like I've learned so much. Well, mm -hmm. that student has mm -hmm. also spent every single day reflecting and then reflecting with a peer and then also writing, mm -hmm. being asked questions to think about what they're doing. Mm -hmm. And so this time, yes, you're learning because you've had time to really think about it. And so I think all these, these, these reporters, these journalists are going to come and, and learn and share some very fruitful information because, yes, they've been able to learn through the engagement and reflection. Mm -hmm. And uh, part of the engagement and, and the learning process is also this artistic, uh, um, these artistic activities. So you're kind of mm -hmm. encouraged, and I remember from previous conferences, <laughs> even forced to participate <laughs> and, and dance accurate. and, and uh, things like that. Uh, and I remember. Um, Bill, that you were particularly kind of afraid to engage in that, and that uh, gradually you kind of. I saw you sing the previous time, <laughs> and I, I almost wanted you to sing uh, uh, at, the, at the end of the conference. Well, yeah. You're absolutely right. I mean, I, I don't think I'd sung in public since I was about 13 and sung Four Rays Requiem at Stanmore <laughs> Church. So, uh, I, I, go, I do sing on Sundays at church, and uh, people often turn their head round and look at me, or laugh at me rather than look at me. So, but no, it was a really, it was a very. The whole thing about this conference is it's not passive, it's active. You have to, you cannot just sit there and let it go in that ear and out that ear or yeah. fall asleep. Absolutely. You have to get it engaged, and that's really important. Yeah. Yeah. And it does give you an opportunity to do things you wouldn't normally do. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I would agree. Would, did you dance? No, you well, can't dance. Have you seen, have you seen I mean, me dance? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I look at that's me. why I'm asking. <laughs> <laughs> look at me, look at me. Of course I can dance. Yeah. Yeah. That was a very natural movement. Oh. Um, no. oh, was it? You know? <laughs> no, it wasn't. It wasn't. I, I was asked to dance yesterday when, you know, you remember, both of us were asked oh, actually, yeah. by uh, Francois, a very, very nice human being. He asked us to come outside and when they were, you know, they, some people just draw that circle. But basically I was, because he had either the opportunity to dance or to run very quickly or to be standing outside of the circle yeah, exactly. and to dance or to run for a, what was it for for you know like a specific idea that you had in mind yeah. mm -hmm. or a purpose and there were some people that also that I saw they were just thinking well, why why should I do that <laughs> and then what well, you also told me 
don't think about it. Just you know, just do, just it. do it. Just do yeah. it. And that was what both of us were doing. Mm -hmm. You know, just an either standing there and looking at the other people. Yeah. There was some music, and that's exactly what Bill just said. Mm -hmm. You know, this is not like a normal conference. Of course it isn't. Mm -hmm. And that's why I guess so many people come again and again here to visit the University of Luxembourg mm -hmm. and to just be active. Mm -hmm. And that's what's mm -hmm. most, even if I haven't been dancing all the time, mm -hmm. uh, sometimes it's also just an inspiration to just step back and watch other people dancing and mm -hmm. just, you know, and then think, I should be doing that too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, as, as the name came up for, for Francois Carbon, do you think he's either to, to blame or to thank for, for this experience? <laughs> and what do you think about that? About how, how, well, about Fernand, uh, sorry, Francois. about Francois. He's, What's his name again, yeah? He's central, he's pivotal to, to this whole enterprise. Yeah, sure. Do you think you would ever get engaged in, in anything like that without him? I think it's, uh, it's necessary to, to, to have a, um, a perception of diversity, a very particular perception of diversity, uh, mm -hmm. uh, a wide uh, open mind, and, and this is what uh, Francois has. And uh, I, in my opinion, there is a, is a, is a brilliant idea, uh, the transatlantic dialogue, mm -hmm. because uh, it's unique, it's a unique event. And, and uh, I, I hope that this, uh, this Congress uh, has a long life and, and we can, uh, and we, we will, uh, I hope we will uh, enjoy this. But speaking as a Spaniard, speaking as a Mediterranean, you had one criticism, didn't you? Well, I, I, I felt uh, that uh, there, is, there are no people from, from Mediterranean countries, but I'm sure that in the future uh, will, be, will be people and experts that also can uh, offer a, a, a Mediterranean view of, of diversity and, and of yeah. cultural diplomacy. Mm -hmm. Then we'd all have to do the flamenco, wouldn't we? Not, none of us. <laughs> no, I'm not very good at the flamenco. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> well, it would be a new experience. A new experience for him, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So why don't you suggest that to Francois then? What, that we should invite the Spanish? No, no it's been years Spanish, fighting yeah. the Spanish Armada. We can't. <laughs> have Come on. We're not, there's not that much diversity involved. <laughs> no, we'd only no. have the Spanish here. Yeah. And the Portuguese. You know, it's been great, yeah. obviously. I mean, we had somebody from Malta philosopher from Malta who spoke mm -hmm. this morning I thought he spoke brilliantly exactly. and so we, we do embrace uh, mm -hmm. the, south, the southern end of, and there's a woman from Turkey this morning I spoke to a woman from Turkey mm -hmm. this afternoon mm -hmm. as well so there are a few but mm -hmm. yeah. but they're not enough visible mm -hmm. yet mm -hmm. or not mm -hmm. in enough numbers strong numbers to to be visible yet no. I mean it's open I think I think the conference is open to anybody who responds mm -hmm. but it's just that the tendency for the networks we use are obviously in the states and in sort of some other parts of Europe yeah. the thing is this conference is growing and growing yes yep. and this is mainly due to Francois because he has many many valuable contacts mm -hmm. and this invitation I mean the, the the invitations he's sending out are just meeting so many people yeah. I mean that's basically we are here and I'm not just talking, you know, mm. something. We are here because of him, because of his mm. spirit and because of his enthusiasm. Mm. And he's not this guy that's looking at his watch and saying, okay, it's five o'clock, I should go home. That's definitely mm. not him. No. Um, and because I remember, because we talked about those people that might be still missing in several panels. Mm -hmm. But I always remember when I go to his office, um, he just says, hey, hey Danny, I have those other people now coming. Two weeks later, he's saying, no, I have this panel organized. <laughs> the conference always just growing and growing. Absolutely. And at some point, you just have to say, I think it's enough for this time. <laughs> but maybe for 2020, you know, <laughs> there are so many other ideas and people that you meet here, well, that all of us met yes. here, mm -hmm. um, so that new panels can be created, new ideas can can be gathered, so that's actually actually the the perfect point of that conference, mm -hmm. I would say. And one of the key tasks also of this editorial board, just mm -hmm. to keep track of what has been done exactly. and maybe uh, open up to to new ideas. Mm -hmm. yeah. But but one element about Francois is that tomorrow the conference finishes effectively today tonight, but tomorrow he's put on a tour of Luxembourg for quite a few people. I think there's something like 50 people. Two buses are going. It's typical of Francois that he insists on going on those coaches. Most organisers, having finished tonight, they say, phew, mm. that's it. But no, he's there. He's going to be there at 7 o'clock in the morning with the buses, etc. Yeah. So that, his commitment is ongoing and yeah. genuine. Yeah. 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 
I would agree. And above all, I think, and I, at least for me, that's uh, one of the main uh, key characteristics of, of Francois. Mm -hmm. um, all of us are here already for the, the second or the third time. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. if it wasn't for, if it weren't for Francois, I don't think we would be as engaged nope. as we are now. Certainly true. I, I, I remember I came as a graduate student three years ago to this conference for the first time, and. I met Francois. He took the time to like embrace me, teach me about Luxembourg tradition, the three kisses, still learning. <laughs> and <laughs> and I, I just remember feeling this very warm, open, friendly feeling. And I've been to many conferences in the U.S. and You've I, never been kissed before. Uh, yeah, <laughs> never been kissed Come before. to England, I'll kiss you. Touche, touche. Yeah, yeah. So. No, but I, I, I just remember feeling very welcomed and it was because of him and I remember he came a year later to um, the United States to a conference that we usually go to in student affairs in the United States, NASPA. He asked us to present with him at NASPA, so we did and I got to know him there so I stepped, kept in touch and I remember when I started this new job at Georgia State. I was like, we need to get involved. And I remembered this experience. I was like, and I want to bring students and I want to go again and I want to help plan it. And so I emailed Francois and I was like, I don't know what you're doing, but I don't know if you need help, but I want to be there to help. And he was like, sure, here's a list of things to do. <laughs> <laughs> and the list is still growing. But <laughs> I think that is, that's why, that's his spirit. You know, he's always going to be open for help and involvement and engagement. Yeah. and. Even now that the people I've brought have talked about coming back and that they want to help with the planning, and it's just it's contagious because he's made me that way. So then, therefore, I embraced it to others, and now, I mean, I only see growth going forward. I don't foresee that this dialogue is going to end anytime soon because there's more to talk about now that the world is getting more and more, whatever. <laughs> and <laughs> people like Francois are needed. So, so one look because I think we're roughly are going to round up. Any final food for thought during this interview? Thinking of something particular you want to share? Yes, because the thing is, I can add to this that Francois is a mentor. Mm. Mentor to me personally, but I also say that he's a mentor to many, many other people. Mm -hmm. yeah. And to the student assistants mm. also particularly, because I was a student assistant in 2014. Mm. Mm. Now I'm standing here as a part of the editorial team and that's due to him because he also trusts me and he trusts many, many other people. And he's not that type of person that has to stand on stage, but he's the one willing to create human bonds and to bring people together. And that's again now happening as part of the editorial team mm -hmm. for me. For me it was, and I'm not saying that because this has been recorded or whatever and because you asked me, but it, been, it has been a very, very nice opportunity to now you know, work together with these four people during those three days. They've, they have been quite stressful, but that's also something that brings people together. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and I'm very much looking forward to, you know, the next weeks where we will collect the different texts, where we will try to wrap everything up. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And I'm really just, if you ask people, what do you want to say as concluding words, most people say, well, actually everybody said, I'm looking forward to 2020 mm -hmm. when hopefully the next transatlantic dialogue will, you know, be here or wherever and that's, I guess, the most important thing. Yeah. Yeah. Agreed. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. All I'd say is that uh, Danny has done, we've all done a bit, we all do our best, but Danny's on here, yeah. so the, a vast majority of the work has been done by him. He's, he's done a brilliant job. He's got many of the skills that I wish I had. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Bill. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think I can only confirm that. Mm -hmm. So, but this actually counts applies to all of you, just to be on the safe side, so don't worry about that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much.